Welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about Donald Trump's $1.5 trillion infrastructure plan. Well, the government just shut down two times because of funding disagreements, but Trump and Congress figured out the solution. We said we wanted Oprah as our president, and they must have taken note. Yeah, that's pretty much how we resolved our budget disagreements on February 8th, with the deal that gave out an additional $300 billion. Turns out the best way to agree on a budget is to throw out the budget. That said, this infrastructure plan was not a part of that budget, and it's a fun little DLC attachment. So where is this $1.5 trillion going towards? Well, first, $1.5 trillion? Not exactly. This feels like one of those tricks from The Art of the Deal, where Republicans give us some top shelf insanity and then present what is really just mid-range domestic insanity served in a classy bottle. In fact, it was really $200 billion with the intent to drum up $1.5 trillion. Now, $200 billion is a ton of money. Quick plug, but if you watch my previous episode on China's ghost cities, you would know that it cost them about $32 billion to make an entire Manhattan knockoff. That looked really good. So that initial funding is the equivalent to about seven fake Manhattans. And that used to be the countryside. So they built everything from the streets to the buildings. So from this point onward, I'm going to be measuring each segment of the infrastructure bill in fake Manhattans. So listeners, you can get an infrastructural visualization of how much potential each section of this bill is providing. So let's start with $100 billion, or three fake Manhattans, on grants going towards spurring extra funds from the state and private sectors. This is expected to raise the $1.3 trillion that would make this a $1.5 trillion plan making it a $1.5 trillion plan in the same way that I'd be a millionaire if other people would just give me $994,000. So the idea here is that these grants would partially find projects that would get the majority of their funding from local or state governments or private industries. The plan emphasized two distinct groups, travel, like airports and passenger trains, as well as disaster aversion projects, like water facilities and Superfund sites. Now, that sounds great. Where do I sign up? Well, the big problem that some critics are pointing out here is that in order to spur on the $1.3 trillion of investment, this government incentive program only covers, at best, 20% of the cost for specific projects, which means that the vast majority of this money might go towards rich townships. Now, this may sound bad, but if you want infrastructure jobs on the cheap regarding a federal government's budget, Republicans would argue this is how you have to do it. Next, to $50 billion, or one and two thirds fake Manhattans, that the government would be spending on projects in rural America. Now this is gonna be money sent to the governors of rural states to help them develop their infrastructure. This is designed to boost roads, water systems, and update other infrastructure projects in their countryside. But there is one real emphasis on. Last April, I commissioned a task force to meet with farmers and local communities to find the greatest barriers to rural prosperity. The task force heard from farmers that broadband internet access is an issue a vital concern to their communities and businesses. Giving rural America high-speed internet has been a priority for Donald Trump. And while at first that might seem like a weird priority, this part of the country is losing jobs and has crumbling infrastructure, but oh geez, can they still Netflix and chill? That said, we are seeing counties that can't do simple things like run credit cards or compete on digital marketplaces. Not to mention a major problem of not being able to take advantage of government services, like Obamacare. Although, I'm pretty sure that last piece is probably not the motivating issue behind Trump's rural internet push. The issue is recognized by both sides of the aisle as a pretty clear problem isolating and hurting these communities. Although, unfortunately to the people affected by this issue, an angry tweet is the sound a rooster makes to wake you up in the morning. So, it doesn't have much presence in our media. 
The next funding portion goes to $20 billion, or two-thirds of fake Manhattan, which are going towards a transformative projects program. Now I read through this 53 page proposal, I'll link to it, but I highly recommend skipping over this one. It reads like, well, what you would expect from a government proposal on how to revamp the country's infrastructure. You're gonna need something harder than coffee to get you through this one. Anyways, the first step to funding this transformative projects program is to create the transformative projects program. Now the way you can be sure this wasn't written by Donald Trump is that this program is not called the Donald Trump Make America Great Again Biggest Program Ever Program. So what is this transformative projects program? Well, going back to the document, the transformative projects program is definitely a program I'm not surprised hasn't existed before in this country. Its goal is to provide funding and assistance to projects that are likely to be commercially viable but that possess unique and technical and risked characteristics that otherwise deter private sector investment. Now, I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing, but I can't imagine anything more Trump than a government program dedicated to funding projects that are deemed too high risk for private industries, but will generate the government a ton of private revenue if they succeed. So this next line item is a bit strange, $10 billion or one third of a fake Manhattan for a new federal capital revolving fund dedicated to buying back federal land. Now this one is probably going to be pretty controversial because while the PR team is doing everything they can to make it have the appearance of buying back federal land, when you read the actual document there is much more emphasis on the revolving door portion. And let me tell you, it seems more like a fire escape than a revolving door. The basis of this fund is to streamline the disposal of federally owned assets. The three bulletins below this proposed buyback federal land fund are about as subtle with their intentions as a drunk frat boy on Tinder. Saying the fund will codify accelerated depreciation for the disposition of non-federal assets with a federal interest due to grant receipt, streamline and improve the federal real property disposal process, and authorize federal divestiture of assets that would be better managed by state, local, or private entities. Basically, the US is having a going out of business sale. Fans, we kept our receipts from the Louisiana purchase. Yeah, I know there might be a little water damage, but come on, it's near mint condition. And Russia, you can have Alaska back at a discount, if you can outbid Exxon. Of course I'm being hyperbolic, but the main point of this fund is to allow the government to sell more assets and streamline the purchasing process from other people so that funds from purchase lands will go directly towards the treasury. Finally, we come to $20 billion or two thirds of fake Manhattan to go towards paying for an expanded federal bond buying program that is split between loaning money to private and local government projects. Now this is pretty straightforward and I'm surprised it didn't get more funding. Nothing too poignant or funny to say here, just your classic government loaning itself money to fund local infrastructure projects to be paid back at a later point. So there you have it. That's how the government is planning on allocating the $200 billion it's asking the Senate to vote on. According to MarketWatch article I used for most of the outlines of today's episodes, it has about a 15% chance of passing because it requires support from some Democrats. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of That's All I Have to Say About That, and click here. And please click here to subscribe and remember to like below. And if you're really a fan, you can join our Facebook group. It's just a party over there.